You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Hey, what's going on everybody? Kenan here, and uh, yes, I am with the Fly River Turtle because it happens to be the animal that we're gonna be talking about in today's Ask Camp Kenan question. Today's question comes from Rachel Grosman, one of our Patreon supporters who uh, we really appreciate. And you guys have been asking some really fantastic questions, and uh, I love doing these every Saturday, so I hope you guys enjoy them because we both learn together. And uh, you know, sometimes if I don't know something, I'll go ahead and research it or ask one of the experts that I know, and uh, we get the right info. But right now, today's question from Rachel, she's asking, can fly river turtles go into their shells, or are they like sea turtles in which they can't? And I think we've got a pretty good answer here. Uh, they can't pull their flippers in, okay, not too much. They can pull their head in quite a bit. Um, their shell is, it is a harder shell, but it has a leathery skin that's on top of it. And if you look underneath, you can see that they're pretty well protected. He's just flaring out his cloaca right now because I ran in and I grabbed him. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, they can't pull their tails or their, um, or their back legs too far in, but they can kind of protect themselves. Now, much like all turtles and sea turtles in particular, when danger is near them and they can see it, what they'll do is they'll angle their carapace towards the danger if it's a crocodile or a shark uh, in the case of a sea turtle. But actually, fly rivers may encounter sharks because where they're from, bull sharks uh, will swim into fresh water and uh, they'll try and get them. So what will happen is they'll swim and they'll angle their shells towards danger like this so that they can't get a good bite. Now, even though it's covered with a leather skin, uh, it's still a pretty darn good um, defensive shield against any predators, man. Now, you guys will notice behind me the pond looks a little low and muddy, huh? So I'm trying something different this season. What I'm actually trying to do is create or actually use the wet and dry season here in Florida. Now, as you know, these guys come from wet and dry areas themselves where they'll have monsoonal rains that raise the level of their uh, bodies of water, of the river systems they live in. Now, what's interesting with this species, even though I don't have a male, uh, excuse me, even though I don't have females in here, I do have male and female Badiger affinis, the Royal River Terrapin. And those turtles, much like the Fly River Turtles, I'm suspecting have a kind of trigger if you will, for when they want to breed. I believe they start to breed when they need a little bit of a cool or a dry season to kind of just lower the water temperatures. And then as they start to raise, they get active, they start to um, travel around and look for places or other mates. So I'm hoping that'll induce some kind of breeding activity on the Royal River Turpins. And had I had female fly river turtles, I think that would also uh, help them start to breed as well. Now, another interesting thing about the fly river turtle, uh, even though it doesn't go all the way into its shell, uh, when it does lay eggs, the eggs hatch underwater. Again, I believe that's a survival technique for the babies. See, they'll lay them on land, the mothers will come up, lay their babies on land, lay the eggs on land, and then as the water levels start to rise, it triggers the animals to hatch. They start to develop, and then they wait in the egg until the water actually touches the eggshell, and this is the trigger that allows the babies to hatch. And what a fantastic survival technique. As you know, sea turtles lay their eggs on land, they have to hatch, and they make that arduous journey of only a few hundred yards down into the ocean where the real battle for life begins. But on their way down there, there's heat, there's birds, there's humans, there's raccoons, there's all manner of, of creatures that are eating the babies. And they usually hatch, uh, if they're unlucky enough to hatch during the day, well, they're gonna be seen by a lot of uh, predators. Now with this species, their eggs stay in the ground, if they're lucky enough not to be excavated in the first 24 hours, they'll develop and when the waters rise, they hatch underwater. So they're already in the water. So it's just a really cool uh, adaptation that this animal has had. So it's a really fantastic species as you guys can see. And this one's being very good to me right now. Not slapping me. I know you guys have seen the video with me getting slapped. But he was just eating some tortoise chow and some turtle diet. And uh, you can see the elongated turtles doing their thing as well. But he's just kind of hanging out. And I love this turtle. It's my largest fly river turtle. Uh, I very heavy animal too, to be perfectly honest. But it's a fantastic animal. It came to me from the San Diego Zoo, where a long time ago they actually got a bunch of 
baby Fly River Turtles in around 2001 from a large confiscation, they started to grow up and they realized, here he goes, he's starting to slap. They started to realize that they were mostly male. And these are a very aggressive turtle and they will bite and gnaw on each other and even other turtles in their enclosures. So they had to pull them off display and start separating them. And as you can imagine, it's quite costly to put one large turtle in one tank all by itself. So they found breeders like myself that work with different zoos and I was able to facilitate a few of them. Now, this pond is big enough, as you can see, there's no damage on this guy's shell. The water is kept muddy for that reason. What will happen is if a turtle is getting stressed out, it just has to swim a few feet and it can't be seen by the other turtles. Most of the time, believe it or not, these turtles bury themselves in the mud and they're just kind of hanging out. They've got a really good nose, as you can see right here, and that nose smells the food. So whenever I throw food in there, they wake right up, they come out and they get a feed. So there you have it, Rachel. I hope I've answered your question. They can go in their shell a little bit, but mostly they're just using it to hide in the bottom of the mud and they just leave this exposed and so it just looks like a rock and then when they come out to swim they use these beautiful paddle like flippers and they swim just like a sea turtle so what do you say we put this animal back and we uh get on to finishing up feeding for everybody i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of camp cannon i hope the lighting was good didn't even check that but anyway i'm gonna let this guy back hope we've got a video or else i'm gonna have to catch him up again and try and shoot another one but I think we managed, don't you? All right, buddy. Well, we'll just put him on back in there and he'll go right back in. Thanks guys, see you later. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you guys really like what you're seeing here on Camp Cannon, join our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash Camp Cannon and you guys can become supporters. We'd really appreciate it because we love to make these videos. And that certainly helps us out. Also, if you go to Instagram, please follow me on Instagram at Camp Cannon. I'm trying to get to 100,000 followers. We're almost to 50,000. I know we can do it. Can you guys help me out? So if you like what you're seeing, you want to see more of it, go to Instagram and follow along there. Okay, Fly River's gone. I'm gone too. Peace.